Hi there, I'm Bain from Independent Building Advice and in this video today we're going to talk about eight tips in which we're going to make your recreation, your pool room, your games room, your basement, your man cave, your woman cave, whatever you want to call it, into the ultimate play and fun room for you. So we're going to go through eight tips today about how we're going to make that area fantastic for you and make sure that you haven't left any stone unturned when designing it, making it right for now and for the future. All right, let's get into it. Okay, tip number one is you want to make a list of all the things that you want to have in that in that games room for now and for the future. There's nothing worse when you design it perfectly for today and then you realize down the track you want to add another item to it. So you want to think about what items are going to be and you also want to think about the sizes of those items. So for example, some things you might want to have in your games room is table tennis table, pool table, or snooker table, you might want to have couches, you might want to have a table, do you want to have a dartboard, do you want to have a foosball table or table soccer, do you want to have, um, do you want to have something down the track there where you're going to have like a bit of a bar area, or do you want to have a drinks area, or maybe a stand up sort of stools, have a think about what you want in that actual room, make a list of it, and see how you can cater for that for now, and for the future to come. Hey, if you get a moment, what we'd love you to do is write a comment below about the kind of items you'd put in your games room or rec room, um, uh, that you think would be awesome, maybe some items we mentioned today, maybe some items we've missed today, that you think would make the place look schmicko. Some people I've heard of uh, will put motorbikes in there, some people will put some memorabilia on the walls, tell us the kind of stuff you'd put in there, comment below, we will respond to as many comments as we possibly can, love to hear your input. Item number two is when you've got your list of things that you actually want in the home, you wanna make sure you get the sizes right. So for example, pool, site, pool tables come in lots of different sizes. So you wanna make sure that not only do you have the room for the pool table, but you have space to walk around that. Same thing with table tennis tables. How far back are you gonna to stand to have your shot? Okay, now if you're a professional, you might wanna stand a long way back with the table tennis table. But let's just say that you're limited by space somewhat, and how do you make the most out of that? So we're gonna talk about sizes for pool table and what you need to do first of all. So a pool table, for example, you need to allow at least, in my opinion, the minimum you wanna allow is at least 1.2 meters uh, back from the pool table, and that gives you enough time to actually have your shot. Uh, but really 1.5 and greater is optimum. Now 1.5 plus the pool table side on both sides of the table means that you need quite a lot of space there to walk around. So you need to make sure that you factor that into your design of your uh, uh, games room or you might have to compromise maybe on the size of the pool table that you choose. There's nothing worse than having the shot with the pool cue like this against the wall. You want to basically lean down and really have your shot so you get a good shot. So the only way you can actually achieve that is by having that extra space there. But obviously, you know, some in often cases uh, we're limited by space. Okay, now the same thing with table tennis tables. I would say you want to allow at least 1.5 meters to stand behind the table tennis table. Foosball tables, you can probably get away with 80 or 90 centimeters when you turn your little knobs and you don't have to stand too far back. Dart board, if you have a dart board, you do want to stand back a fair, fair way from that. I would say six to 10 feet, depending on um, you, your skill set, and the room you've got to play with. So these are things you want to think about when you're actually designing the home and where the rec room and where actually that space is going to go. Really important. So just to cut in for a second, if you if you could like and subscribe this video, we really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. It tells us we're on the right track, but it also helps the algorithm go out to other people who might also be interested in this content. We really appreciate it. So just like, subscribe, and press the bell icon if you like what we're doing. Thank you. Number three, you gotta think about how each of these items in your games room slash rec room uh, are gonna function with each other. So for example, you don't wanna be having your shot of pool and then hitting the arcade uh, behind that. Now you might have someone playing an arcade game and you might be interacting with each other badly. So you wanna make sure that you space your area around. You might have the arcade games near the bar area overlooking say the pool area. So you wanna make sure that when you're playing the game of pool, it's not interrupted with the other things. So you wanna make sure all the items are interacting with each other beautifully, 
so that you have a nice flow with your actual recreation sort of living area. So tip number four, and this is a big one, if you're designing this rec room, games room in the rest of the home, you wanna think about how that room interacts with the other rooms of the home. Now this is really important because if you've got um, balls clicking each other, you know, click, 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 click all around the time, and you've got someone in the house you're just trying to relax and read a book or go to bed or whatever, that sound is gonna get very annoying for them. Now, and that might cause a few arguments with each other when you're just trying to relax and they get that clicking sound happening throughout the home. Now, if that's the case, I would recommend trying to put that games room as far away from the bedrooms as you possibly can. At the same time, pool table, table tennis table, they're quite social sort of events. You generally do play that with somebody else. So you wanna make sure that that room is sort of integrated or close to your main entertaining areas. I think the best way is having it coming off the outdoor area so that if you do have friends over at Christmas time or birthdays or whatever it might be, that you can have people playing pool inside and they can flow indoor and outdoor quite easily and you have an indoor outdoor sort of feel. Uh, the kids might be playing pool in that room there while the parents are integrating in the outdoor area or maybe in the main living area. So you've got to flow and those areas become one big social event. Or your lifestyle might be that the men go to one area, the women go to another area, and that's totally fine as well. My main point that I'm trying to make is you want to plan out where the rooms are spaced in your home and how it's going to interact. My favorite way of thinking, and this I guess is tip number five, is having dual access to that games room. So it might be that you have an access way to that games room off the main living area, near the kitchen maybe, so you can get a drink or you know interact with each other, but that games room also has an access way for the kids' bedroom. So the kids can have their own playroom, they have their rec room, they get out of their bedrooms and they actually have a bit of fun, and that might be off a rear hallway of the actual main part of the home. So I reckon that's a great way to have dual access. You might even have a three-way access where you have an uh, access from the main living area and access from the kids' bedrooms and then you have like a sliding door leading out to the outdoor or fresco area so that people can be outside having a barbecue or whatever and then also come back into your main living area. So I would look at how that's spaced around your home uh, and make sure that it's interactive and it does the job for you. Item number six, how do couches, stools, you know, furniture actually tie in with your rec room. Do you want to have a couch here where you can sit back and relax and have a cup of coffee and sit by the table? And if so, how do you want that, do you want that looking over your rec room area? Do you want to be able to watch movies and have like a screen in there uh, in that rec room? A, a really popular thing at the moment, which we're hearing from a lot of clients, is having a great room. And that's like a theater room slash games room, all as one massive room. This can be eight meters by four meters, so it's a really big area. Uh, and that means that you, know, you can watch movies while you're playing a game of pool and interacting with the family, you know, a great room. So they're a really good idea there, but you wanna think about how do they interact with each other? If someone is clicking the balls of the pool table, is that gonna affect TV? Can you have a curtain that you divide the two different areas off? How's that gonna work? And also, if you're gonna have stools, do you wanna sit there and have a drink and watch someone playing the game? So think about how the furniture of that room interacts with the room, because if it's a standing room only, and someone wants to come in and have a chat, there's nowhere for them to sit, it's not so relaxing. So you wanna think about chairs. Tip number seven, and this is to think about um, the bar area. The bar area of your home is, you're gonna have a drink, you're gonna have a refreshment, where's the bar area gonna be? Now this could be an area where you can stand behind the bar and you can serve people drinks, which is pretty cool. That's the old school, like having a pub at home sort of thing, uh, and you can have a drink there. Or you might just have a wall where you've got your drinks there, you got a little drink fridge in there, you can grab a beer, grab a chat, and stand around. So a bar area is quite conducive for this area. Uh, I qu quite like the idea of having the bar area towards the outside of the home. So not only does it serve the uh, the rec room or the games room, it also serves the outdoor area. So you could have like an indoor, outdoor sort of bar area that allows you to have a drink at different, different sort of spots. But I like the idea that it can be used in multiple parts of the home. So bar areas are pretty popular in the rec games room. Saves so you going all the way to the kitchen to get a refreshment. Uh, and in there, I think like maybe a bench, uh, at least a bar fridge, um, you want to probably have a wine rack depending on what you're into uh, and you might even have like a little sink or something in there to make, make things work. And tip number eight, and this is the last one for this particular video, and that is think about lighting and electrical. Now lighting is really important and when I say electrical I mean what kind of uh, equipment are you going to have in there? Do you want to have music playing? How's your stereo going to be in, in the home? Are you going to have like lights set up there? Are you going to have one of those fish on the walls that sings when you walk past it? I don't recommend that one but 
whatever you're into, um, do you want to have some sort of lighting in that room that's going to give it a bit of a feature? Now, why this is really important is over the bar area, for example, you want to have lights directly above because you don't want to cast a shadow on when you're cutting up some lemon. Uh, at the same time, you want to have a big light over your pool table because the best way for lighting for a pool table is directly over the top. But you also want to have mood lighting. You don't really want to have that room too bright because you want to have a, a intimate sort of uh, feel to it. So I would recommend having a dimmer, light doing lighting around the outside of the area, maybe have lighting um, behind the arcade game because a bit of a shadow on the arcade game isn't a bad thing. Um, but just really think about your lighting, get a bit of mood lighting. I like the idea of like different colors on the walls for different images. Uh, you can really make it look great. So strip lighting underneath uh, the uh, pool table could look cool. Strip lighting underneath the bar area could look cool. So just really think about how you're gonna create the mood of that really fun, entertaining area where it's lit up where you want it to be lit up, but not lit up where you don't want to be lit up. All right, that's all our suggestions for today and for this video. I hope you've enjoyed them. If you have enjoyed these videos and you haven't done so already, we really ask you to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon. What that means is just that it shows us that we're on the right track with these videos and you got something out of them, but it also um, allows you to hear the latest videos that come out when they come out, so you get them straight off the, off the top there and they don't get missed. Thanks very much. If you've got any questions, please comment below. We will actually read as many comments as we can. We'll respond as often as we can. So we'd love to hear from you and your opinions on how all this worked. Thank you.